we've seen over the last um, couple months, a uh, huge surge in usage for a whole bunch of tools, for Zoom, uh, for Microsoft Teams, for Slack. And we saw an enormous surge in new customers, new teams, uh, and new customers. Uh, increased usage on existing uh, customers. Uh, it's going to open up a lot of possibilities in the software business more broadly. Uh, organizations that thought they could never work remotely, you know, or there would have been a three to five year transition when they have to do it in a week, it turns out they can do it in a week. I think opens up a lot more possibilities for digital transformation. In the medium term, however, I think we still have no real idea how this is going to affect small and medium businesses, what the real economy is going to look like uh, you know, two or three quarters from now, and how long that's going to take to come back. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag in the, in the medium term. We're surviving pretty well um, in this work from home and, and remote work environment. Um, so no pressure to come back to the office. In Hong Kong, and this is CNN. With today seeing the single day increase in global cases of coronavirus, with more than 93,000 Americans now having lost their lives and states reopening, with new cases still rising, and a majority of Americans from both parties saying they prefer going slow, you would think that the president would be concerned about this and this alone. You might think he would feel the weight of the responsibility he has for 350 million Americans' lives. Or then you might look at his Twitter feed. Quoting now, Crazy Bernie Sanders is not a fighter. He gives up too easy. The Dem establishment gets Alfred E. Newman, Mayor Pete, and add Amy Klobuchar to quit and endorse Sleepy Joe before Super Tuesday and gets Pocahontas to stay in the race. Now, if you're counting, that's three schoolyard names, one ethnic slur, all in a single tweet. There's also this one that's also a twofer, or maybe a threefer. Quoting again, Roger Stone has been treated very unfairly. How about that jury four woman? Does anybody think that was fair? Disgraceful. Stay tuned. And guys like low-rating psycho Joe Scarborough are allowed to walk the streets, open cold case. That's the President of the United States, the chief executive in the middle of a pandemic, defending a convicted felon and a former fixer and attacking a juror for doing her civic duty. Then, after using a slur to anyone with mental illness or caring for someone who may be uh, suffering from mental illness, the president repeats his thinly veiled allegation against Joe Scarborough committing murder. We won't elaborate on the allegation, only to say it concerns a former congressional aide who collapsed from a heart arrhythmia. She hit, hit her head and died. That is what the medical examiner in the case determined. Authorities never suspected foul play. It is not a cold case. To say otherwise is not only a slur on Joe Scarborough, it's being utterly heartless to this woman's family and to her memory. But that's what the president found time to do today. He also promoted conspiracy theories about the former administration, and yes, he did tweet a bit about the pandemic. Some of it was routine, some of it not. He tweeted, and I quote, Michigan sends absentee ballot applications to 7.7 .7 million people ahead of primaries in the general election. This was done illegally and without authorization by a rogue secretary of state. I will ask to hold up funding to Michigan if they want to go down this voter fraud path. Sent a similar tweet, by the way, about Nevada. The issue is not really that everything he said in them is factually false. It is. The important part is his threat to withhold funding from the states if they don't do his bidding. And late today, a senior administration official left that threat hanging, telling CNN, quote, no decisions have been made at this time. Discussions are ongoing. Does the words, I want you to do us a favor, though, does that ring any bells? Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? So there's that, and there's also this. Military members, they vote by mail. So do students. So do entire states, which only do mail-in voting. So does the President of the United States. But the President himself has voted just two months ago by a mail-in ballot. There are several Republican states that are also doing these mail-in applications for ballots. And so I'm confused. What is it that he thinks is illegal that's happening in Michigan? He doesn't really specify. So first, with regard to the President doing a mail-in vote, um, the President is, after all, the President, which means he's here in Washington. He's unable to cast his vote down in Florida, his, res his state of residence. Uh, so for him, that's why he had to do a mail-in vote. But he supports mail-in voting for a reason. When you have a reason that you are unable to be present, well, perspective now from CNN's Caitlin Collins, who asked that question, and CNN chief political correspondent Dana Bash. Caitlin, first of all, what do you make of, of Secretary uh, McEnany's response? Because it seemed, you know, ironic coming from the president, uh, first of all, who goes to Florida quite often. Uh, I'm wondering what you made of the response. Well, 
Well, I don't think it's surprising that the president votes by mail. Of course, he doesn't live in the state that he now calls home, Florida. But the point overall was that the president cannot vote there. But people and their concern in these states and why we're seeing this move in toward mail-in ballots and the applications that are happening is because people are concerned about what it's going to look like when there are primaries and when the general election happens in November. It's not just November that is a concern for some of these secretaries of state. It's primaries that are happening before then and whether or not people should be standing in line close to each other for hours on end waiting to vote if depending on where we are and what progress has been made about the pandemic so far. So that's why it was so notable seeing the president go so hard after Michigan today when you've seen Georgia's secretary of state also make similar moves. And of course, the Secretary of State in Nevada is a Republican. They're moving to an all mail in voting uh, for their primary over the summer. So that was the question. You know, he's only singling out certain states like Michigan. And later in the cabinet room, he tied it directly to polling, talking about a battleground state in Michigan, saying he just got new polling in that he says has him up in Michigan. So making clear, there is certainly a political aspect to this. Dan, what is the, the, the political calculation for the president here? It's so incredibly transparent. I mean, that is what is consistently remarkable about this president, is that he doesn't hide what he's doing. I mean, he is in a way that we used right. to have he, to He says the quiet the, stuff out loud. Oh. Always. We always oh. historically have had to peel back the onion, what's really going on inside the White House. He does it on Twitter. And today he did it in an extreme